get ready to hit the Boston. At the airport, we're heading out to Charlotte right now. Can't wait. Boston, here we go. Tomorrow is the Boston Marathon. Today's Sunday, getting my last run in, which is just a shakeout run. I'm trying to do like a three mile or two mile run, just depending on how my leg is. My leg is feeling a little, still a little tired for some reason. And my Achilles was kind of tightened. So I'm gonna try to stretch it out more after the run and jog today. But it's been amazing. This place was awesome. You know, yesterday I went to the expo. I met Ryan Hall and Meb in their sessions or seminar running sessions. Um, it was great just to hear them talk and speak and see and seeing them in person is just this awesome feeling. Just saw Meb seminar at the Boston Marathon and uh, waiting in line right now, next in line to see Meb. yesterday and uh didn't really like running in the downtown area because of all the lights and all the people but once you get into a charles river it's like all running ground it's awesome like this i'm actually at the finway garden society which is like a little garden here where i'm staying at but it has like a mile or a mile and a half loop which is perfect and as you can see no traffic because you're in the park Yesterday I did have a friend that took me from Hopkinton and drove all the way through the race course just to get me to have a feel of the race course and uh, you know, so I can visualize. It was great. Uh, we couldn't get all the way to the finish line because, you know, Boys Boyston Street was just full of people so we just stopped there. But I got most of the view of the race. It looks really, really easy in the beginning. But then those four hills back to back, it's gonna be a killer. You know, right at the time where you're feeling tired and fatigued. So got my bib, got my gels in my shorts, my electrolytes right here, and that's what I'll be wearing. Today I'm gonna to talk about how the Boston Marathon race went and also how the weekend went when I was up there. Uh, I got up there Friday, so I was there, you know, pretty much Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and there for the race on Monday. I went to pick up my packet in the afternoon around 5 o'clock. There wasn't a lot of people there, which was really good for me. I just went in with my digital pickup on my cell phone, showed it to them, 
and then they gave me the packet with my bib number and then go pick up the shirt and this is the shirt for the Boston Marathon 2019 so I didn't do much on Friday went there picked it up and then went up to eat um, there was a lot of lines we were waiting for one of the spots that we want to eat and we waited for like an hour and 30 minutes um, there's a lot of people there especially on Friday and it's the Boston Marathon weekend coming so uh, I just do expect to to wait I think you can check with them to see how long the wait is wherever you're going so then you at least have an idea um, but don't try not to wait too long as in standing wise because I was standing up for a while and we were walking around and then my legs got tired and then sat down somewhere like a, some pastry place and then um, they called in our table when we were you know going to eat Saturday rolled around. I went for like a five mile run in the morning on the Charles River, which was really, really nice. It was wet and raining, um, but after you get on the Charles River, I mean, it's pretty much just a straight shot. Um, there's a lot of routes, a lot of trails, so you can get on a lot of pavements for running. Um, it was designed for running, so everybody was out there, you know, getting their kind of last run in or cool down or, you know, shake out run to, uh, before the race. And uh, that day I went back and then I, I rest most of the day and then towards the end I wanted to go see um, some of the seminars that they had. I didn't go to the expo, I didn't want to stand around all day. I didn't want to go see the runner seminar where they talk about some of these runners that wrote books like, you know, Ryan Hall and uh, Mab. And I really wanted to meet them in person. I was seen on TV but I didn't never see them in person. So I went there, um, I actually missed the seminar that they were talking about the authors and the runners that they were in but I did catch Ryan Hall on the way out and took a picture with him so that was really really cool he's um, probably about the same as my height which is about 5'10 ish uh, but he's like a lot more buffer than I am because see he lifts weights now and I uh, was able to stay for the next running seminar which was about Meb and you know how his running career went and about his book that he uh, he wrote uh, 26 marathons and um, and I think it's about uh, 26 marathons that he learned something about every single of the marathons. And I was able to get up there and, you know, I uh, took a picture with him. Sunday was an easy day. It was a checkout run for me. I just did a 5K early in the morning around the Finway Park. Uh, I think it's called the Finway Garden Society, which was like, I think it's like a mile and a half loop. And you did it twice. It's about three miles. And I ran a little uh, more. So it was like 3.1. And then... That was my checkout run. Uh, then went back and rested. Um, did walk to meet one of my friends at the Runner's World uh, near there. I did yoga there with uh, Run Yoga, which is really cool. And um, Meb and Ryan was actually there as well giving speeches, but I met them the day before, so I didn't hang out around them too much. And I uh, just met and talked to my friend and then I uh, went back. Uh, went to Whole Foods to get some food and to bring back to the apartment to cook and then uh, pretty much pack and get ready for the next day's race. Uh, I didn't want to wake up too early to start packing then so I want to just pack that night and get everything ready so in the morning when it rolls around I just really just you know I guess brush my teeth, change and get ready and then uh, walk up to uh, do the gear check and get on the bus. So I stayed at an Airbnb, I didn't stay at a hotel, which was about probably a little bit over half a mile walking to the convention center and about roughly a little bit over a mile walking to the gear check and the bus loading area. Um, the only thing I didn't like, I mean the location of it was great, the only thing I didn't like about it is that the, the room doesn't have a lot of soundproof so people was you know talking or moving furniture. I don't know why, but it sounds like they were moving furniture like throughout the night, like at two and three, and it was loud enough to wake me up uh, most of the night. So um, didn't have good sleep like I do when I am at home, but it is what it is. Um, but the location was great for the race. So Monday, race morning, I woke up at 5 a.m. I got all my packet that I packed last night with the gear check and the clear gallon that you can bring to the race, which I have some uh, gel, plastic bags, food, snacks, and uh, bars before the race. It was calling for rain, so I did bring a lot of extra bags just in case I need to wrap my shoes in. And um, I'm glad I did because it did rain and it poured down rain. Otherwise, you know, my shoes and my clothes would be completely wet. 
before even the race and you know I, it, it wouldn't feel too good then so after I got everything I brushed my teeth um, ready to go I ate a canola bar and then I left at 6 a.m. walked to the gear check and to the bus approximately walking to the bus and to gear check was about a little bit over a mile so maybe about probably like a 20-25 minute walk for me and uh, walked to the bus got to gear check in you I was in wave one quarrel five so they had the bus with the wave, you know, wave one or was this way on this street, wave two is on this street, wave three is on this street for the gear check. So it was organized. Um, you went there and then you find the window with the number that matches your range. Like mine was 4807. So I just looked for wave one that has the window that has like, you know, 450 to 4900 like 4500 to 4900 and then i just give the bag to the person up there and then they would just store it and after the race you would get back to the same place and uh, just pick it up so after i did the gear check uh walk towards the bus was probably about you know a five minute walk towards there and you have to have your number out because they'll check you make sure you you can pass even to get on the bus yeah i got there roughly about 6 30 or so um, there was already other colors like blue color um, bibs to was walking in there to I think it was kind of mixed So I don't think they actually limit, you know wave one to go before a certain time and then wave two starts later It's like as long as you have a bib number you can actually get on there and go and it started pouring down rain uh, Right when we got to the bus uh, we were waiting for a little bit and it started pouring down rain um, the first set of bus left and then the next set of bus came in and uh, we got on there and we left. It took about the ride from uh, Boston downtown to Hopkinton. I think it took about roughly about four to five minutes to an hour. I don't know exactly, but it, it, I mean, it, was, a, it was a good while to get there. It wasn't like a, you know, a 10 minute or a 15 minute ride. Now, once the bus arrived at the Athletes Village, and you get off and you walk. Uh, it was still raining at that time. And uh, we walked to the Athletes Village and we got under a big tent. Now, if it wasn't raining, then there's probably people in the tent and outside. But since it was raining, everybody was in the tent. So you have to find a spot and to sit down and just relax and just chill. Because you'd be there for a few hours before you even line up to walk to the start, which is about 0.7 or 0.8 miles. And make sure you have a bag, a uh, plastic bag sweater, uh, sweatpants that you're gonna, you know, just donate afterwards. But if it's raining and wet, make sure you have garbage trash bags, you know, to where you can just lay down and then put your stuff and you can lay down on there or sit so you don't get wet. And also have, you know, bags to cover uh, your shoes so your shoe doesn't get wet. Now I noticed some people have like brought two pairs of shoes. So I think they one of the pairs that they have is gonna be just the donate that they're wearing and then during the race they switch to wear, you know, their, their race shoes that they're going to have. And I guess they have like, you know, socks and stuff and they just, you know, change it right before the race. Which is also a good idea if you have a pair that, you know, that you don't need anymore. Now there's a lot of porta johns uh, that they set up for the race. So you don't have to worry that there is no porta johns. There's like one everywhere. But to the one at the Athletes Village, even though there's a lot, there is a long wait. So I... Four to five minutes before my coral leave, which is wave one, I went and line up to get into the, you know, to use the restroom before I go. And it took me like 30 to 35 minutes of waiting time. And there was only like maybe, I don't know, probably 20 or 30 people in front of me. Well, I guess that would take a while. So I tried to go, you know, like for at least four to five minutes. So make sure you can get in time before the time that you want to leave or the exit to go to the start line. And even when you're walking towards the race of the starting line, they have a restroom there as well. And then you can verge off to go to the restroom uh, for the last time, or just go to your uh, coral, and then you can, you know, just warm up and stretch there. Now in the coral itself, it's kind of like a big box, uh, I was in coral five, so um, you can't really do strides in there. You can stretch, uh, you can do a lot of stuff in there, but you just can't do strides. Um, so if you need to do strides, get out of your coral and then on the side or you might need to get on the streets right beside it or the side road where you can actually do strides back and forth uh, if you really want to. I didn't. I just really just stretch. I didn't want to get out. Um, 
And I guess my, the race was about to start by the time I got there. It's like the guy that ran the Boston Marathon a few times, they knew, they knew exactly where they're going and what they're doing and how much time they have. So I saw them just doing strides outside and then like three or four minutes before the race, then they were just jogging to the coral or the corral and then prepare for the race to start. There's a bunch of volunteers. I heard there was over 9,000 volunteers and they have like pretty much like trash bags hanging on the fences for the Boston Marathon throughout all the way to the start line. So you don't have to worry about not finding a trash can to throw away. Um, you can actually just keep your water bottle or whatever nutrition you have that you're going to use before the race and then just use it all the way towards the end and they're going to have trash bags there where you can just you know throw away right before the race all right so here is the race summary i started off how i wanted to and i the first five miles i went slower than my goal race pace which is 640 and it was around you know 650 655 or even hit seven minutes so i didn't go out hard i did what i planned on where it's just go out conservative. Now there was a lot of people, a lot of people was hyped up, uh, and I noticed a lot of people, some people were sprinting out, um, going downhill, so they were going really fast. A lot of people passed me, which I was okay, you know, and I expected and knew it, and I was ready for it. So I didn't go out hard. I went out the pace that I want to, and I took some water and took a gel at mile five and things were going okay. Five, getting six to, between mile six and mile 10, I started to pick up the pace a little and pick up that pace to uh, my marathon pace, which is 640 and I was, I don't know, I was hitting exactly, but I was around that range. It was feeling comfortable and I took my gel at mile 10 for my second gel and I uh, drank some water there as well. Well, I didn't drink a lot of water like I did compared to my other races because I didn't, didn't think I need to and I just drank it pretty much so far for the first 10 miles um, two or three times that mile probably five and then ten or five eight and ten but I knew it wasn't a lot now mile 11 to 14 I kept the same pace since the first five miles was slower than my marathon pace and since I didn't run any faster it kind of was a bit slower than my Boston Marathon goal pace which I was fine with um, but I was feeling a little bit more tired um, my heart rate was going up into the 170s and uh, I was hoping to keep it around the 165 or low or high 160 but not into the 70s but I was already hitting 170 at that time and I can feel that I'm starting to struggle a little bit you know in that range which was the half point of the marathon. Now mile 15 and 16 is right before the hill and I was already feeling tired at that point so I don't know is it because I didn't taper enough or is it the injury that I had during my training and so I didn't get to the fitness level that I expect or thought I had but I was feeling already a little tired and pushing a lot harder than I would normally expect at mile 15 and 16 and this is before the hills you know there's four hills right afterwards and um, that's where I'm heading into and not feeling my top notch or feeling the best you know um, compared to the other races I had so 16 to 21 is it was slow. It was going uphill and then it, you know, flattened out or downhill a little bit and then it goes uphill again. So within the four, well, within the five miles, there's four hills. Climbing, I think it's not too much. It's around like maybe 250 to 300 feet of elevation possibly, uh, but it's just all crammed together. Now that's the most hills that I have done in that short amount of time for a road race. Um, now, not comparing to ultra, ultra is just completely different. It's pretty much all uphill or all downhill and up and down the whole time. So it's a different terrain and you go a lot slower. Well, for me, I go a lot slower. And, uh, but for this, it, it was something that I was not experienced before. And before when I ran a race, it had a similar elevation. It was like, it was a loop, which was the run hard Columbia Marathon. And you get the hill, but it's exactly like 13 miles different from the other hills that you run into because you're doing, you know, the hill again. So after the first hill, I was doing all right. After the second hill, I was doing okay. And either the third or the fourth hill, I started to have muscle failure where I try to push it, but my muscle didn't push it. It's like it doesn't react to what I'm telling it to do and it doesn't go any faster. 
And after I got up to the last hill, at least I know for sure, I totally had muscle failure where I couldn't really run um, at the, even close to the pace that I was, was wanting to. I started feeling after the hill, my legs, and I was feeling more tired and I was feeling more dehydrated. And especially after the hill to mile 25, I was feeling dehydrated and I tried to get in more water at that time and get like people were handing out oranges on the side, which was amazing. And I grabbed some and I ate some, but I think it was, it was too late. It was, you know, once you realize that you're dehydrated or out of electrolytes or something, and then you take it in, you know, it takes time to digest it and I guess for the body to use and it was too late. I, I was feeling dehydrated. I was getting really tired. And once I hit mile 25, my body starts to cramp up my hamstrings. And this is both my legs, not just one, both my legs, both my calves in the front, it was cramping up and I couldn't even walk. I had to stop for a little bit until it was, I was able to, you know, stretch it out and walk. And then I was able to walk and then I was able to jog a little. And then it was like a cycle of walking and jogging because it was cramping up and then it went away and then it cramped up and then it went away. So my last mile, felt like it took forever um, and it was the longest, the slowest mile probably that I did in all of my road marathons because it, it cramped up and I wasn't able to run. But luckily the crowd was there, they cheered me on. I had my name on my arms. So they were yelling out, yeah, you can do it, you know? And I was just like, there was a group of them just yell my name out and I look on the side and I saw it and I was like, yeah. And then I start jogging again. But uh, their spirit really, really lift you when you're feeling so crappy in the race. Um, but was I, I was able to jog in, you know, and finish the race. And it was like the last, my last mile was probably like a 10 minute mile or so. Cause it was just, oh, I was trying to push it in, grinding out just to get to the finish line. But uh, feeling wise, it was not like a good feeling. It's kind of like the feeling of when I ran an ultra, uh, like a hundred miler, and then, you know, everything just shut down and you can't do anymore. It was almost that feeling, but I was able to walk. Um, so, and, and jog a little bit, so I was able to push all the way through and finish the race. So things I thought um, that affected the race from my first Boston Marathon was one was my training. Um, I had the extension tendonitis on both foot back to back, which took me out for seven weeks, which was close to two months. And that time is where I would train mostly, you know, on hills and ramp up and missing those you know, two months was very, very important. And I think if I had those, I would have done a lot better on the hills. Unlike uh, what happened where, you know, I had muscle failures go in uh, after the third or the fourth hills. Um, yes, yeah, so I think that really impacted. So, you know, in your training, injury is a big setback. So what you do is try not to overtrain or, or whatever gears you're wearing, try not to change too much. Otherwise, you know, if you get injured, then it sets you back. And depending on the injury, um, maybe something you can get over in a week or two, which would be great. But if it's something that lags on and lasts for you know, like a few months, then you know, then you might be in trouble and might need to adjust your training or expectation of your race. Number two is the weather. It was the warmest that I have done in a road marathon and I wasn't expecting that. I was expecting Boston to be cold and maybe rain and wet. Um, and I was trained, you know, I trained in the, the cold and throughout the winter. So I'm used to the cold and I expected that, but once it got humid and hot, I haven't run any, even long runs over 60 degrees. Most of them is like, you know, below one four, or below 40 degrees or 45 degrees. So it's kind of chilly and I don't sweat a lot, but Boston Marathon day this year, I sweat a lot and I should have drank more water throughout the race and not just, you know, a lot towards the end. So if I, you know, one of the things I learned is, you know, check out the weather, see what it's like, and you might need to adjust during the race. And I think I would have done better. I don't think I would have broken three hours, but I think I would have maybe got to like close to three hours if I just drink water throughout and not, you know, drink every five miles. I would drink like, you know, at every mile possibly or every, you know, two miles or one and a half miles just to get fluid in continuously because I was sweating a lot. Yeah, another thing is this race, like you have to, there's this component of waiting and standing and walking to the race because it's such a big race. And I don't know about the other marathon majors to do the same thing or not, but um, compared to any other race that I've done before, 
there's a lot of standing and waiting around. So make sure that if you, when you can, you know, sit down and rest, especially the marathon weekend, try not to walk around too much. Um, if you want to do really well, then try not to walk around and visit or go into the expo and, and stay up too long because uh, that's going to affect you, um, how you're going to do in the race. So I, I crossed the line at three hours, 10 minutes and 19 seconds, it's my chip time, not the official time. And it was the slowest time in the last six marathon. And the last two marathon prior to this, I was actually sick and I ran faster than I did on this marathon. So the course is very, very challenging. Um, I would love to do it again because I think I can do a better time and a better performance. But, you know, I do want to look at other races that I want to do, like maybe Chicago or New York as well. So um, I don't know I'll be able to do it next year, but it's going to be the next year or the year afterward. I do want to come back and give it another shot. Some of the, the notes I have for the race is that the crowd is just amazing. Um, it's the biggest race I have been in and the crowd is just, you know, a phenomenon. They were yelling at you. They scream, you know, really encourage you. They have the spirit. Uh, like I said before, you know, you write your name on your arms um, it lifts you up a lot when they call your name even they don't they don't know who you are um, but it's, it's actually really 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 fun and uh, it's really electrifying with how much people get out there and just um, enjoy the marathon and supporting all the runners I actually was planning to write my arm uh, with a waterproof uh, marker but I forgot to order and buy it so when I got up there I just bought a permanent marker from Staples one thing I didn't know was the race is so big that there's no groups in at least the, the pace I was going or the time I was going for. I think if you're an elite, you know, way up there running sub two hours and 45 minutes, there's probably like a big gap and then there's group forming. And when I was running on my other races, that happened for my pace because I guess the race was small. But the Boston Marathon is so big that I had people running around me the whole entire time, so there's no group. And I was expecting to run in a group, you know, like a mile 10 to 20, but that didn't happen. It was just pretty much just trying to stay paced because there's people everywhere. Now there's a lot of spectators, there's, there's a lot of kids that go out there. And uh, what I did a lot this race, which I didn't do in any other race, was that I gave a lot of high fives. Um, I think I probably gave about uh, two to three hundred high fives to kids and adults along the race um, and it, it was just amazing and it just cheers them on like it, it looks like they've been waiting there for a long time and then somebody gave them a high five and they're like oh yeah I got a high five kind of so enjoy the race I would recommend it and you know it, it just lights up like kid, the kid's face when um, you give them a high five yeah I so I love the race it was very challenging I didn't do well but I would like to go come back and give another shot um, and that's what I like about running different races that, you know, different course has different challenges and, uh, well, different course have different challenge, challenging, challenging, challenges. Oh, different course have different, uh, different course have different challenge. Ah, so I really liked the course because, um, uh, it was very, it was very challenging and different courses have, you know, their different challenges, but, uh, Boston is a unique one that, you know, I haven't ran into a lot of the issues in other marathons that I have with Boston. So do look forward to come back um, in the near future. This is the meadow that you get. I think it's the exact same as all the other years, except for it has a 123rd Boston Marathon. So it's pretty cool. I uh, really like it. And, uh, Hopefully I get another one and but perform a lot better than I did this year. So that's going to be the wrap for my Boston Marathon journey. Um, started in 2014 with the very first marathon that I didn't think I would expect to run Boston Marathon. But as you train consistently, you know, I got better and better and then was able to qualify and didn't get in the first year that I qualified. I was 10 seconds short from the acceptance time. Uh, then I tried again and the second year I was able to get in. So um, I was able to accomplish that. So I'm very, very happy about it. So I appreciate you. Thank you for following. So that's the end of this series. Uh, my next series is going to be training for the Yeti 100 miler in West Virginia. Um, the race is September 23rd.
I think, or towards the end of September. Um, so that'd be a good one. It'd be my, my only 100 miler this year. But changing from road marathon to trail is going to take some time to adjust. And uh, I want to keep my speed. So I'll probably just do run on the road a lot during the weekdays. And then on the weekend is when I head to the trail. I hope your running and training is going well. Stay injury free. And I really appreciate